Hello and a warm welcome to News Click. I'm your host, Neelu Vyas. And on this platform, you'll find me with a brand new show called Point of View, which uh, brings you discussions, debates, uh, interviews from the poll bound mm -hmm. states. And we also delve deep into the poll bound states as to what is really happening over there. What are the issues which are really resonating amongst the people? Today, we are going to talk about Battle Uttarakhand. It's a high voltage battle for 70 seats. Traditionally, it's a bipolar contest between BJP and the Congress. But this time in the year 2022, you have a debutante party that is the Aam Admi Party. And so far, the perception has been that Aam Admi Party is trying to gain grounds in this hill state. But which way the mood will swing, we do not know as of now. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's begin this today's discussion. I have uh, two veterans from Uttarakhand and let me introduce you to them. I have a Congress spokesperson, uh, Sujata Paul, who's joining us today. Sujata, welcome on NewsClick. We also have Anup Nautyal, who's a veteran from uh, Uttarakhand. He's a founder of the Social Development for Communities Foundation and a well-known face of Uttarakhand. I welcome you on the program, Anup. Thank you. I'd like to begin with uh, Sujata. Uh, Sujata, how, how are the odds really stacked up uh, for the 2022 elections uh, this time as far as Congress is concerned? Uh, it's a win-win situation for the Congress party. Because, you know, there are times when you have a negative vote and there are times when you have a positive vote. But here, it is the people who've decided that the Congress party has always delivered. Uh, there might have been shortcomings, but the Congress party has never strangulated people, has never brought the state to a, a stage where people have to come to the streets and nobody's there to listen to them. And the most okay. important factor is three chief ministers who were changed. The Devastanam Board Act, which was repealed, and uh, 204 employees of the Senate Kalyan Board, which is an act of parliament, uh, mm -hmm. are on dharna. Why? Because they're not being given the seventh pay commission. The government, after being pressurized, uh, decided to pass this in the cabinet and yet did not implement it. So the ex-servicemen who are connected to all these people are antagonized by the government have uh, you know and are completely against the government as far as the youth are concerned they are all over the place the government what it did was it removed the dharna stal from the center of uh, uh, you know dehradun and took it to a place called ekta vihar which was away from the main city that means they did not want to hear the voices of dissent, the voices of protest, which is quite, uh, quite unnerving for us and very concerning if you look at uh, the entire scenario. So unemployment, migration uh, are issues. And there are many other issues which I'm going to talk about, if you uh, permit me. Uh, if you look at the UK SSC, which is the Adina Seva Ayog, exams mm -hmm. are conducted by them. And you have an organization called NSEIT, which conducts these exams. But this very organization has been uh, blacklisted in BJP rule states like Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. But in our state, there is rampant cheating and then there will be uh, protests and then there will be an SIT maybe, but nothing really comes out of it. And, uh, you know, at the end, when the results come out, you find that there are a huge, uh, you know, uh, you know, huge number of people from the same family or people who are, you know, the role numbers are very close to each other. They've been selected. So there are a lot of irregularities this government has committed. And I must also add over here that people are watching them. The model code of conduct violations have been brazen. Uh, the education department had a whole lot of transfers and appointments made which had to be cancelled after there was a UN cry raised by the Congress party. Right. In addition to that, there is a, a violation of point number 22.6 
of the MCC manual whereby you cannot open any tender. But the government is doing exactly that. And this is a tender for rupees 40 crore for purchase of drones. And I'm hoping that the uh, you know election commission is going to take cognizance of that also. So people are watching them and they know that these are chief ministers who have been accused of uh, uh, rampant uh, uh, corruption. For example, the first one was removed because he had a he had a case against him. The second right. one after the comb uh, scam had to be removed. And the third one actually said that he was uh, he would allow he had never stopped rather uh, thieves from uh, stealing. His words were Mene choru ko kabhi chori karne se nahi roka. Uh, during the election campaign of 2017. And people are recognizing this and they're all against them. Right. So you're clearly saying that uh, the mood of Uttara Khandis is, is not in favor of uh, the BJP. Uh, but Anup, if I come to you, uh, do you really see the battle of 2022 in any way very different from what we have seen in the earlier years? Or you would just see it as a very traditional election with some alternating patterns? You would see BJP for five years, then you would see Congress for uh, five years. Or do you really see this election as something which is going to be very different this time? Nilu, first of all, you have given me a veteran. I am very grateful for that. I am not a veteran. So having said that, uh, uh, thank you so much for having me on the show. And uh, so just wanted to sort of set some context and perspective, you know, to this 30-minute, uh, 40-minute uh, sort of chat conversation that we are having. And for the benefit of your viewers, uh, where are we coming from? So this is the fifth election in Uttarakhand. Uh, we were, as a state, we were formed in the year 2000. So just to sort of go back a little bit. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, every election, we have a change uh, in the political party, which rules, you know, the state. So we had the, we had the Congress in 2002, then we had the BJP, then we had the Congress, we had the BJP again. And somewhere or the other, you know, the common person on the street, of course, you know, Sujata has her own point of view, you know, belonging to a, to, to, to a party. But uh, if you talk about the average Uttarakhandi out there on the road, the perception is, ki bhai, hai, sarkar to badalti hai. you know, this is something very, very normal. Governments will come, governments will go. The second thing is that there is also a perception. Now, you know, of course, in today's age and world, perceptions matter a lot. Uh, narratives matter a lot. And one way or the other, one perception here in Uttarakhand is that parties are also in some way or the other, they are hand and glove with each other. So a general sort of, you know, uh, mindset. Hai. Uh, uh, now, so Niru, your question was relating specifically to this 2022 yes. election. Right. What do I have to say? You know, so the way I look at this battle, uh, the battle of 14 February uh, results will be out on the 10th of March. I essentially see this as once again a bipolar contest. And before I come to the Ahmad, the BJP and the and the Congress battle, uh, and we leave the Ahmad party aside, uh, I just want to share two significant trends with your viewers in the past four elections. And I think mm -hmm. that these are again uh, very very important from the point of view of setting the context. And the first and the important thing to note is that the vote share for the national parties in Uttarakhand has in each election gone up. It has, you know, it has gone up and there has been a significant increase. In fact, even in the so-called route of the Congress in the last election in 2017, the Congress party secured a 33% vote share. The BJP and the Congress got 80% vote share in the 2017 election. So something very, very significant as far as the as the mind space and the vote of the Uttarakhand voters goes. That is number one. Yeah. Number two, Nilu. Again, when we look back at the four elections. So, Anup, if I can just interrupt you for a few seconds. So if you're saying that the vote share for the national parties has drastically increased over the years. So does it mean that those smaller fringe groups, the fringe political outfits, which uh, actually leaped into the electoral fray, uh, is there no space now for wo them? So, wo to clear and you know, uh, uh, also to add, you know, to build to that first point that I shared. The second one is again, you know, I, I'm going to share some sort of top line numbers with you. 
2002 and 2007 election, the BJP and the Congress together got 55 seats. In the 2012 election, this 55 went up to 63. We're talking together. And yeah. then in 2017, the, the combined tally went up to 68. So we have 55, 55, we have 63, we have 68. Now, naturally, you know, when the two major parties are, are going up like this, they're eating into somebody's vote share. And, you know, in, in, in the earlier years, you know, we had the BSP, we had the Samajwadi party, we had independence, we had, we had regional outfits. And for instance, to give you a, again a specific example of the BSP, whose vote share has reduced from 12, 13% in 2012, or rather 2007, right to about six odd percent. And this is where the Amadbi party comes in. Haridwar and Udham Se Nagar, which have 20 out of our 70 right. assembly constituencies. This is the vote, vote, vote bank perhaps, which Amadbi party will be vying or, or looking at, you know, here Haridwar mein hamari ekat koi seat nikal aati hai, Udham Se Nagar mein ekat koi seat nikal aati hai. But to summarize, you know, my, my sort of answer to your question, jise hum kahenge Hindi mein ki ye ek mudda vihin chunav hai. Is chunav mein koi bhoat bada mudda nahi hai. ठीक है वो बीजेपी अपनी बात बोलेगी कांग्रेस अपनी बात बोलेगी आम आदमी पार्टी अपनी बात बोलेगी सबके अपने अपने नैरेटिव है सबके अपने अपने डिस्कोर्स है बट एसेंशियली स्पीकिंग दिस इज बाय एंड लार्ज एन इश्यू लेस इलेक्शन फॉर उत्तराखंड दैट इज द वे दैट आई सी इट एंड ऑफ कोर्स यू नो सुजाता विल हैव अवर ओन काउंटर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू बट दिस यू नो कमिंग फ्रॉम एन इंडिपेंडेंट वॉइस देयर इज नो बिग स्कैम देयर इज नो बिग करप्शन देयर इज नो बिग नो नैरेटिव कि भाई वो डबल इंजन ट्रिपल इंजन ऐसा कुछ नहीं है एक सामान्य किस्म का चुनाव राइट but Sujata, uh, just uh, taking a cue from where uh, Anup was uh, speaking on, that it's an issueless election and it's actually a faceless election also. Uh, if BJP comes to power, we do not know at the moment that who's going to be their chief minister. Even though you have a person, a veteran called Harish Rawat, who is in the political fray, he's leading the party from the front, but we do not know whether he is going to become the chief minister. There's no surety on that. So uh, what is the reason you see an issueless, a faceless election, which uh, rides on very overarching issues and nobody knows what those issues really are? No, uh, you know, I don't really agree to that. And uh, I have reasons for that. Uh, but before coming to that, I do want to uh, uh, you know, point out something that Anoop mentioned about mm -hmm. the 6% Vote share. This is uh, this is something which has come out uh, from the Aam Admi Party uh, camp. I've I, you know I've been told that they are only targeting a six percent vote share in this particular election. And there is a second point uh, which uh, which is something that is a matter of concern. Also, maybe Anup would uh, know more about it. The Youth Foundation, uh, which is headed by Colonel Kothyal, also has some kind of role of Shorya Doval in it. So that is the reason why uh, the Aam Admi Party was probably pitted uh, against the Congress Party, not against the BJP. And why am I saying that? Because it is the B team of the Bharatiya Janata Party, if you consider all these facts. Uh, but uh, in the Hill, Hill region, of course, when you talk to the Panda Purohits, what they say is that we cannot allow these guys to come in because uh, in Delhi, they, they didn't do anything for Dilbar Negi when he was uh, murdered. Uh, and there, there are other things that they have uh, in mind. But coming to issueless and faceless, I think as far as the Bharatiya Janata Party is concerned, they have understood that uh, the popularity of Mr. Modi has gone down drastically. People have also realized that voting in the name of Mr. Modi is not going to get the MLAs to work. And that is why MLAs are constantly uh, facing a lot of protests and uh, MLAs are fighting amongst themselves. Former Chief Minister Mr. Trivinder Singh Rawat acted called Mr. Harak Singh Rawat, who was a cabinet minister in his government, a gadha, you know, gadha dhecha dhecha karta hai. There were fights between MLA Umesh Sharma Kau and uh, in front of Dhan Singh Rawat with another office holder of the BJP. Then there were fights uh, among uh, a lot of these uh, BJP leaders in Rurki. In uh, uh, Haridwar, when uh, Mr. J.P. Nadda came, uh, what we saw that uh, he had to leave his rally in between. The reason being there are three factions Sujata, over if there. if I may just interrupt you, we might not have seen these kind of open fights uh, in Congress, uh, the, the similar kind of fights which you are uh, just naming, but uh, similar allegations have been made about Congress. Your party is uh, 
uh, is, is rampant with factionalism. Then you have uh, uh, people like Kishore Upadhyaya being shown the door. They are not on any posts right now. And, uh, and there's a lot of internal bickering which is happening within the Congress party. So how do you stem that? You know, uh, it, it's, uh, uh, it's quite amusing that uh, on the one hand, you have fascist forces who want uh, to strangulate your voices. But on the other side is the Congress party where you have the freedom to express yourself. And this is nothing new. This has been happening. all. It has always happened. And uh, so you can't really accuse us of bickering. If there is something which is happening, it is it is democratic. People voice their opinions. They might fight with each other. But when it comes to the Congress party, they stand united. And why do I say that? Because if you look at the Congress party uh, in the entire country, forget Uttarakhand, there has always been that steady vote share, which always votes for the Congress party. Look at uh, what has happened in Uttar Pradesh, uh, the situation that we've come to. But still, there, that particular percentage will always vote for the Congress party. So I think those people do understand that you might have your own opinions. But when it comes to the party, the party is more important than you. So you can't really uh, you know, accuse the Congress party of factionalism. Of course, there are leaders who have supporters and they want to project themselves or want to get projected. That's perfectly fine with us because unless and until you have aspirations, you won't, uh, won't be working, uh, you know, uh, you won't be doing your job as well. And uh, if you look at the Bharatiya Janata Party, you don't know who will be the chief minister. That means what? That whoever is going to be forced upon the people will have to be behaving as the chief minister, but will not be working uh, as the chief minister. So what's the point of such chief ministers? That's what the people are saying. So when you talk about uh, Uttarakhand and the three chief ministers, uh, you know, we really need to understand. They Sometimes they say that we're going to go on the work of all the three chief ministers. So if they were wrong, the first two, and they were removed. Uh, why were they removed? If they were doing the right thing. I must tell you that people have been protesting, uh, you know, uh, on the streets of the capital ever since uh, the BJP came into power. 2018 onwards, we have seen this. Uh, there were one, uh, you know, and uh, Anup will know this even better. There were 717 people who were thrown out of uh, 108 services because the process of... Uh, uh, you know, uh, giving the tender to to uh, to a company was brought in, uh, whereas earlier it was a different system. So all these people are totally against the government of the day and the BJP. They understand that the BJ, BJP only talks about pseudo-nationalism. They are not really nationalistic. The BJP understands that they use uh, the religious plank only to propel themselves amongst the people and that's not really going to help us with the actual issues of the people and people of Uttarakhand are pretty educated. They're not into freebies but they uh, what they want are jobs. So when it uh, comes to a uh, face, it is important that every constituent uh, has a leader who is doing work for his uh, people. So people recognize him, vote for him, and then after that, they select their leader in the house. That is how it should have been. You talk about joblessness. Joblessness remained an issue in 2017. It remained an issue in 2012. It still continues to exist in 2022. If I may get the neutral voice of uh, Anup, uh, uh, how would you really see uh, are the people really contented? I mean, that's that's uh, that that wouldn't be the phrase to ask, actually. But the thing is that, uh, what is the mood of the people of Uttarakhand? Are they really in favor of changing BJP and voting for Congress? How do you really see things unfolding on the ground? Nilu, uh, you know what we were saying earlier. By 2017, we know it was it was a cakewalk for the BJP. You know they got some 45, 46 percent vote share, 57 odd seats. Right. So one thing which is uh, super clear uh, for for the 2022 battle, and of course you know we don't know what lies ahead in the next 25 days because a lot can happen in politics. You know even yeah we we we, we all know that. But as it looks today, it's a seesaw battle. It's a very very close battle. Uh, mm -hmm. that, is, that is the first point that I wish to make. The second point, Nilu, is that, uh, so your question is that, by log kya mehsoos kar rahe hain, log kya feel kar rahe hain. But uh, the way I sort of look at the entire situation, the feeling that I get is 
that political parties are more concerned in speaking to each other rather than speaking to people. I, I'm just making a generic statement. That's a significant observation, yes. Right, so that, that's the second thing that I wish to say. The third thing is how this battle uh, will likely play out. And you know, I, I just want to sort of equate that uh, or draw the analogy of a 2020 over game where the BJP will come with five things and I call them, I, I, you know, it's my own acronym. I call it the 5M. Now you will wonder, kya Anubia 5M kya hai? So the first one for the BJP is manpower. BJP ka sangathan bada majboot hai. The second thing for the BJP, going for the BJP is money power. BJP ek arthik taur par badi sampan party hai. The third thing going well for the BJP is its muscle power because it's the party in the center and it's the party uh, as well as in the state. Mm. The fourth thing for the BJP, you whether you like it or you don't like it, the fact of the matter remains that the management power of the BJP is very, very strong. So we've spoken about four and so far, manpower, money power, uh, muscle power, management power, and you and Sujata can guess the fifth M. It's a pretty straightforward Modi power. So these are the five M's for the BJP. Hmm. And then uh, pit, pitted against the five M's in Uttarakhand are the five C's of the Congress. Now they don't, you know, really relate to everything with C, but the first thing is Berozgari Uttarakhand ka ek bhot bada jwalant mudda hai. Uttarakhand ke lagbhag 11-12 lakh log jo hai, wo employment exchange mein registered hai. Lagbhag. You know, we don't really have the exact data. But again, to translate it in a very simple manner, our estimated population today is 1.15 crore. 1 crore 15 lakh Uttarakhand ki jansankya hai. Agar 11 lakh log employment exchange mein registered hai, it means that every 10th Uttarakhandi is registered on the employment exchange. So, pehla mudda to aapka rozgar hai, berozgari ka ya swarozgar ka ho gaya. So, dusra mudda hai, wo mehengai ka hai. The third one is this entire issue of development or vikas, where then you have subsets, you know, you have subsets of migration. And Nilu, maybe, you know, I would like to really request you as we were speaking on the phone yesterday, maybe we can do another show altogether, just talking about this entire emotive issue of migration, you know, palayan. So palayan, hai, shiksha, hai, swast, hai. these are the basics. The fourth thing is what I have noticed in the last one odd month that the Congress has been much more aggressive now speaking about the corruption or the alleged corruption, you know, because I am no one to say whether there is corruption or no corruption. Mm -hmm or the alleged corruption of the BJP, and they are particularly targeting the chief minister on allegations of Khanan, which is, you know, yeah, pe ka ek bada famous shabd hai, Khanan, I see Sujata's, you know, uh, what you call, ye dono hi mein Khanan ke aarop lagte hai, Khanan aur Sharab ke. And the fifth thing, uh, Nilu, as an independent voice, I want to mention as far as the Congress is concerned, that the Congress, it appears to me, in 2022 is fighting a far more resurgent battle compared to the way they organized themselves in 2017. So the five M's of the, the BJP, the five uh, sort of elements for, for the Congress, this is how this battle is going to pan out. And in terms of communication, I want to wrap up my answer here. As far as the BJP is concerned, they're going to say, we have put 1,000,000,000 rupees, we have said that we have put 600,000,000 rupees, so you know, he's really focusing on, I have taken 600 decisions, I have taken 800 decisions. Uh, you know, so, so that's the BJP pitch. As far as the Congress is concerned, by jobs, ka hai, health education, ka kya hai, palayan, ka kya hai, bhoo kanun. Ab ki bar bhoo kanun ka bada mudda niklega, corruption ko leka niklega, sujata bar bar teen chief ministers ki baat kar rahi hai. To ye sari baat hai, and then, you know, I don't want, because I, then again, I'll take time. So these are the issues which are on the surface, but then there are more deeper and graver issues. I don't think we really have the time today. All I want to also add, uh, uh, Niru here, and then I'll, I'll, you know, keep shut. You know, so there's something called a sticky message, you know, in, in the business of communication. Mm -hmm. Is any message sticking? I don't think that there is any message which is sticking so far, either from the BJP camp or the Congress camp. And, you know, this is the power of communication. And in fact, in today's age and world, you know, social media driven and everything, songs play a big part, you know, so that what led to the downfall of Narayanda Tiwari in the 2007 election was a song by the legendary Narendra Singh Negi. So maybe, you know, some song will come up, but so far, there is no one single message which appears to be sticking emotionally with 82 lakh voters of Uttarakhand. Right. That's, that's a major point you've made, that there's no sticky message. But uh, Sujata, if you've uh, seen the, yeah. the opinion polls uh, which have come recently, 
they all have given BJP seats, you know, anything ranging from 31 to 38. And for similarly for the Congress, it's between 30 and 37. So which means that the fight is neck and neck almost. So are you really confident? Or if I ask, is Congress really confident about winning and coming back to power to form the government? How confident is the party? Oh, the Congress party is coming back to power. And I'll tell you why. In 2016-17, uh, according to the CMIE, the unemployment data uh, says that there was 1.61% uh, unemployment. 2020 to 2021 CMI data says 10.99%. And the youth is what the Modi government always has always been targeting. But the youth is disillusioned today. Now, coming to uh, why do I think that uh, the, this uh, all these opinion polls are way off the mark is because there is 80 crore rupees which has gone into uh, projecting the work that uh, you know the so-called work that Pushkar Singh Dhami has done. And what is this 80 crore? The money spent on advertisements. I have, re, uh, you know, just received a message regarding another scam. And this is, uh, you know, there is an advertisement which was given for a particular magazine, a, a, a comparatively unknown magazine called Khabar Manak. And on 13 January 2022, the bill was passed. And this bill was, Anu, you must listen to this, 71,99,992. So I'm going to go after them. Uh, regarding this also can you imagine for an advertisement in a in a publication of delhi which we haven't even heard of so this is how they are playing the entire thing if you look at the opinion polls there's one thing very interesting uh, you will always see anil baluni uh, making an entry into it anil baluni is not really there on the ground if you talk to people they'll probably say oh unki to tabiyat kharab hai wo to bjp ke koi neta hai bade neta so where is that name coming from that means these opinion polls are probably being managed also by him otherwise how does he make an entry into it is a question i would like to ask now when you talk about uh, the things that this government has said they spent a whole lot of money on uh, this investor summit in october in october of 2018 where they said that we were going to get an investment of 1.25 lakh crore rupees and till date there has been no investment which has come in and uh, so the government doesn't have anything to show us now the problem is that there are youngsters who are uh, you know uh, they go through this examination process they are selected and then they don't get an appointment and i'll tell you why the the uh, the chief minister says i will give 24000 jobs then there are 24 young boys of the parivahan nigam transport department who are out on the streets protesting and they're told hamare paas finance nahi hai are bhai then why did you select them if you have selected them you should have uh, should be appointing them Similarly, uh, the UPCL pit school exam was conducted and 252 young boys and girls were selected. After selection, 150 were given appointments and 102 were not given appointments saying that we with ki permission not have So what is this showing? This is showing that, the, that people have understood that this particular party does not know how to run a government, how to give us a system this is uh, you know if you talk to people they'll say is a big issue is even uh, bjp talks about it congress talks about it but i want to come to the point of propaganda which you were mentioning and i want to go back to uh, anup on this does propaganda really matter to the voter, whether it is a voter of Uttarakhand, whether it is a voter of Uttar Pradesh, you see the kind of ad campaigns which uh, Yogi Adityanath is uh, indulging in Uttar Pradesh, or for that matter, you pick up any state and the BJP's propaganda is there. So does it really matter? And especially in times when the election is almost gone digital, you see uh, parties investing on digital infrastructure, you have digital war rooms all around. And there is no other way to reach out to the people except for uh, indulging in propaganda. So does it really matter to the voter how much money a party has spent on propaganda or advertising? 
नीलू मेरा मानना ये है कि सॉरी यू नो आई टेंड टू स्लिप इनटू हिंदी नो नो परफेक्टली फाइन परफेक्टली फाइन प्लीज फील फ्री मेरा अपना yes. देखिए मानना है कि जो जो उत्तराखंड का नहीं है हमारे पूरे देश का वोटर है यू नो सो द वोटर हैज यू नो द वोटर कंटीन्यूज टू इवॉल्व इलेक्शन आफ्टर इलेक्शन एंड द वोटर इज यू नो फार मोर अवेयर फार मोर इन्फॉर्म टूडे and uh, uh, one of the biggest reasons for that is actually the power of social media because you know when you when you communicate through normal you know your own media channels you know it's it's more like one way communication mm-hmm. but because of social media because of the reach of social media i think the voter is far more mature far more clearer in his or her choice number 1 number 2 i just you know mere kal zehen mein ek sawal aaya maine twitter pe ek poll dal diya i just want to share that with you and with sujata you know and with Uh, you know people folks who are watching this program so i put a poll on my twitter handle yesterday and i asked and i read from there with barely four weeks left for the uttarakhand polls comma have you decided or made up your mind on which party or candidate will you vote for it would be interesting for for all of us to know how and where we stand as a group so just you know this is my curiosity abhi to bhai char hafte bache hue hain अब ठीक है बहुत सारे लोगों ने इस पोल में पार्टिसिपेट नहीं किया एंड यू नो वी ऑल नो दैट दिस पोल्स आर नॉट वेरी साइंटिफिक बट एट लीस्ट दे पेंट अ पिक्चर एंड आई जस्ट वांट टू शेयर विद यू दैट 88% पीपल हियर ऑन दिस वेरी वेरी लिमिटेड पोल ऑफ माइन आर सेइंग यस आई हैव डिसाइडेड ओके 12% आर सेइंग नो आई हैव नॉट डिसाइडेड सो दिस इज नॉट द होली ग्रेल बट ये स्टिल एट लीस्ट यू नो इट पेंट्स अ पिक्चर एंड द पिक्चर दैट वी गेट इज दैट आउट ऑफ 10 पीपल Almost nine are saying that yes, I have made up my mind. So to come back to your question of propaganda. No, but if I may interrupt you, Anup, it's it's an interesting poll. The little poll you've done, it's really very interesting. When you're saying that it's just a small percentage of people which are saying that you know they've made up their mind. Oh no, I'm saying that 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 I'm does it really give some kind of an edge to the third alternative which exists right now in uttarakhand and that is aam aadmi party because people have seen bjp people have seen congress and does it give a clear road map to them for voting for aam aadmi party my curiosity is there that's why i asked you that question dekh to mere ko na i don't know mere ko jo you know the, the sense which i am getting in 2022 uh, is is more you know it, it's as i and i repeat myself you know it, it's more a bjp and a congress battle number 1 Number two is that so you, you don't know, see Amadmi Party figuring no, anywhere. And, and you know, I am no expert about uh, what you call Amadmi Party or any party, but just you know, from you know, keeping my eyes and ears open, and as a as a as an aware citizen, uh, the way I feel is that you know, the Amadmi Party is on a much 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 stronger wicket in Punjab. Whether they form the government or they don't form, we don't know. Similarly, in Goa, which has forty seats, whereas compared to Uttarakhand's seventy seats, it appears that the Amadmi Party is on a stronger wicket there. Uttarakhand is, you know, we have to keep this in mind, Nilu. Uttarakhand is fifty-four thousand square kilometers. Uttarakhand mm-hmm. is not, you know, uh, some Delhi or some, you know, Mumbai or whatever, you know. Or do sorry, I'll just say Hindi ke shabd ka prayog karunga. Jo vividhata Uttarakhand mein, jo diversity Uttarakhand ki hai. Uttarakhand to, you know, you have the plains, you have the hills, you know, you have this, you have that, you know, you have, and even within the hill districts, you know, then you have different dimensions. You have Uttarakashi one way, you have Chamoli. and you know so it's it's a lot of regional it's a lot of societal it's a lot of economic it's a lot of cultural nuances and for aam aadmi party uh bhai aapko chunav aapko rajniti karni hai rajniti karne ke liye aapko sabse pehli cheez aapko sangathan chahiye aap you know you need an organization you cannot you know you cannot do you know you cannot fight an election in such a big state like uttarakhand with with a terrain of this nature with the climate as it is or weather as it is you know just on the on the basis of one or two faces you know so that is one and the last thing that i want to add here is that okay wo to unki rajniti hai bhai theek hai unki apni policy hai ki wo aake wo 300 unit 5000 rupaye 1000 rupaye ki baat kar rahe hain but again as an aware citizen i take the liberty of calling myself an aware citizen i would have been happier had they come and raised you know uh, nilu and this goes back to one of your earlier question what are the issues of uttarakhand uttarakhand ke to bahut sare gambhir mudde hain हम तो अभी जिनको कहते हैं ना सतही सुपरफिशियल इश्यूज के बारे में हम लोग बात कर रहे हैं जो इस गंभीर भाई राज्य क्यों गठन क्यों हुआ व्हाई वाज उत्तराखंड क्रिएटेड व्हाई वाज उत्तराखंड फॉर्म व्हाट आर द एस्पिरेशन ऑफ द पीपल व्हाई वी स्टिल डोंट हैव अ कैपिटल देयर आर मेनी जल जंगल जमीन के सो देयर आर मेनी सच यू नो ग्रेव इश्यूज 
for our Himalayan state, for our beautiful state. And on those issues, you know, the Ahmadi party has not really come up with, you know, I, I think if they come to that, so maybe, you know, it would have been a more vibrant discourse, a more vibrant debate. Maybe intellectually, it would have been more stimulating. But, you know, yeah. they have left that route. And again, you know, to be fair to them, that's the call that they have taken, you know, who am I, you know, to judge uh, what their call is. So anyway, they have chosen to tread the path of this 300 units and, you know, 5,000 rupees and 1,000 rupees, you know, good luck to them. But just to summarize my answer, 2022 is clearly a BJP versus Congress battle. The last thing that I want to add here, Nilu, I forgot to say that, it's a small state. Vishesh Tawar Par, which is our Parvatiya Jinnoh ki joh Vidhan Sabhaya hoti hain, chhoti hoti hain, ek ek laak us mein khali voter hoti hain, voter turnout bhoat kam hoota hai, 55-60,000 vote dalte hain, 500 vote, 1,000 vote, you know, idhar udhar joh hoti hain, aage chale jate hain. So a lot also depends on who is your candidate, you know, is it Sujata or is it Nilu? And then, you know, do I know Sujata or do I know Nilu or mera kaun kaam kar dega? So ye bhi joh local dynamics hain, they are very vital, as you know, all of us know too well. Right. And more so in the hill, 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 hill constituencies. There are nine hill districts, there are 34 seats out of 70. And these things matter a lot in such, you know, constituencies with, uh, with less electors and even fewer voters. Absolutely. And in, in fact, I was uh, very keen on having an Ahmadmi Party spokesperson for this program. And I did try reaching out to them. But uh, I don't know, there was some availability issue and uh, uh, we didn't have anyone on this program. But... Uh, uh, I, I did cover Uttarakhand election, you know, in 2012, 2017 as well, Sujata. And uh, at that time, I remember on the ground when we went, people talked about the divide between the hills and the plains. They did talk about that. The NGOs were talking, the people were talking. But this time, the divide between the hills and the plains is not being talked about too much by the parties. Why not from Congress? Uh, you know, there is no need for that. And I think that, uh, you know, any kind of divisiveness is no longer required because the BJP has no, done no, enough. The divide, divide in terms of infrastructure divides. Uh, yes. In terms yes. of emotional divide, the sentimental divide, the infrastructural divide, the political divide. It, it's a divide in, in, in the larger sense. Yes. Uh, no, but I was it's coming not to a that, only, that as far as the yes. plains and the, in the hills yes. are concerned. Yes, but uh, what is very important for us to understand is that Uttarakhand does not reside in Dehradun, Udham Singh Nagar or Nenital. Uttarakhand, uh, you know, when we asked for Uttarakhand, we asked for it because it was a hill state. And Pandit Nehru, uh, in the early 1900s, when he visited Srinagar, he, he raised the pitch for this for the first time, that because people in this state, uh, you know, are uh, have their own kind of uh, uh, geographical conditions, so they have their own kind of problems, they need to have a separate uh, state for themselves and uh, this was this was continuously raised and you know it was very difficult for us to get the state so even today the biggest issue is like anup said time is not enough to speak about the migration issue which is the the, the biggest possible issue if you look at the environmental disasters which are taking place that are going to further make people leave their villages and uh, what are we doing? These are our, you know, natural, uh, uh, you know, prairies, so to speak, because if we are uh, the bordering sta state of uh, China, then in that particular area, we need those people there. We can't allow those villages to become ghost villages. And Anub will tell you how many hundreds of, uh, I think, uh, 400 something villages have turned into ghost villages. And uh, the reasons for that are that there is no uh, employment. Uh, there is a problem as far as uh, education is concerned and also, uh, you know, health. So uh, here I would like to add that, you know, I'm also part of the All India Professionals Congress. I am the vice president of the Uttarakhand chapter. So I can tell you for sure how we worked on our manifesto. We've gone down to every village and I mean every village. We have taken the feedback from there and we are working on a model where we can provide employment to people of different villages according to the needs of that village and uh, what can be, for example, grown in that village. How we can better the entire system as far as connectivity is concerned so that if there is something right. which needs to be transported something which needs to be marketed 
all that so we are working on that and uh, once our government is in place you will see that this is going to be a government which will be working on ground with ev in every village uh, with a specific purpose and this is a this is something that is a you know that is a dream of rahul gandhi ji so we are going to be implementing it and whatever comes in the manifesto will point towards that so as far as uh, us being a hill state is concerned it is very important for us that people in the hills get the jobs are, are made to stay in their villages and are given better facilities so we are working towards that and that divide is not really the main issue today the main issue is that the government of the day has uh, you know was voted in because of all the promises that they made and they were you know they 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 weren't even idealistic promises they were all false promises and people have recognized that and they need practical solutions which are being offered to them and they realize that you know when they are giving their feedback to us there is somebody who's listening to us there's somebody who wants to know how we can better the systems within the villages so i think the difference is going to be seen in the coming days and this divide it is going to disappear uh, between the villages uh, between the rural areas uh, or you know of the hill regions or the urban areas or the plain regions so there will be no divide and every sector every region will be uh, benefited once our government comes into play i mean uh, the voter is uh, going to be the best judge and uh, what all you are promising right now you'll be tested accordingly because uh, the the task isn't very easy for congress as well but one last question to anup uh, notyal before i wind up the show that uh, whatever factor is is in play in uttarakhand there's one big factor about which every state talks about is the modi factor is how dominant is the modi factor and will it really dominate to that level that it really completely extinguishes all other elements of the election तो नीलू जब हमने पहले वो फाइव एम की बात करी थी हमने जो बिल्कुल जो लास्ट पंच रखा था हमने मोदी पावर की बात करी थी तो फिफ्थ एम यू नो द फिफ्थ एम इन द एम आर्सनल ऑफ द बीजेपी बट इज इट गोइंग टू बी दैट ओवर राइडिंग दैट इट्स गोइंग टू कंप्लीटली एक्सटिंग्विश द प्रोस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ कांग्रेस एज वेल नहीं नहीं वो नहीं है वो 2017 वाला माहौल नहीं है वो जो 2000 यू नो जो 2017 का था एज आई सेड यू नो एंड आई हैव सेड दैट यू नो सेवरल टाइम्स टुडे दैट इट्स इट्स अ सीसॉ बैटल यू नो सो व्हिच वे दिस द कुकी इज गोइंग टू क्रंबल Uh, we don't know, you know, but uh, so it's a, it's a close battle. It's 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 an interesting battle. It's 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 a battle that you know at least you know I think at least I'm looking forward to the battle because it promises to be a tough battle. You know, it's not like a one-sided match because nobody likes to you know watch a one-sided match, so to say. Right. But uh, Nilo, so I ha I have you know to answer your question again. I have another perspective, and you know with this. Uh, entire and i want to bring in covid here and the 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 threat of the you know the with the omicron variant and all of that and very uh, briefly mention also that you know cases in uttarakhand have been spiking a lot and you know day after day you know the cases are going up so compared to let's say delhi or mumbai where cases might be declining but here both the cases are going up and uh, the positivity rate is also going up now as we all know the ec has imposed curbs on rallies and road shows and so on and so forth i think that this augurs well for the congress because okay. you know this entire bjp juggernaut you know when the prime minister comes and then this battery of ministers is come coming after one after the other uh, so of course we have seen in several states that this model and this formula does not work but wo hum jise kehte na ek ek चुनाव का एक माहौल बनता है और वो लोगों में एक माहौल बनता है वो यहाँ पे भी माहौल बनता है भाई वो झंडे डंडे वो रोड शो रैलियां आपने तो इतने चुनाव कवर करे हैं और लोगों में एक धारणा बनती है कि यार ये वाली पार्टी जीत रही है और एक मैं वन सेकेंड में एक सड़क की बात बोल रहा हूँ कि यार मेरे को अपना ना वोट बर्बाद नहीं करना मैं सुजाता को क्यों वोट दू मैं अनूप को क्यों वोट दू मैं नीरू को क्यों वोट दू क्योंकि ये तो हार रहे हैं तो वो ये जो माइंड गेम्स है तो अब की बार यू नो ऑफकोर्स वी अगेन वी डोंट नो वॉट गोट टू है how will this whole omicron thing going to play out but as i said that if these curves remain if the battle remains you know more digital and you know more limited rallies you know five people 10 people i think that it's from from that point of view from that perspective it is uh, advantage more for the congress because it will neutralize you know mr modi in his home turf then naturally you know you can't travel and the warmth you know of course you know this virtual is good we are able to speak to each other 
बट दैट यू नो दैट टच एंड फील एंड दैट यू नो वी नो दैट वेरी वेल ना वो तो है ही नहीं तो वो जब पिछली बारी 2017 में तो मोदी जी ने आगे भाषण दिए तो एकदम हवा बदल गई उन्होंने जाके भाषण दिया वो आसपास की पांच छह विधानसभाओं को उन्होंने प्रभावित कर दिया तो अब ये यू नो वी हैव टू वेट एंड वॉच बट टू समराइज इस बारी जो है वो जो 2017 का जो माहौल था जो उन्माद था वो अभी देखने को नहीं है मुद्दा हीन चुनाव इशूलेस इलेक्शन Yes. yes if 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 uh, modi ji was a factor bansidhar bhagat uh, who was a cabinet minister at that point of time wouldn't have told his uh, people no he was the pradesh adhyaksh of the bjp he wouldn't have been telling his people to go into their constituencies and work and that they wouldn't get vote on the name of modi ji and the second thing there would be no polarizing or communalizing strategies being applied to uttarakhand which has never happened earlier you know about the dharm sansad that don't want to talk about it but the fact is that that has failed miserably because people have realized that the main issues are not being looked at and that is unemployment migration health education so those right. are the main issues here okay so the countdown has uh, begun is just a single phase poll in uttarakhand which goes to polls on 14th feb and uh, we'll all have to wait and watch as to what is going to happen but yes the voter of uttarakhand is going to be the judge thank you so much uh, anup notyal uh, sujata thank you so much for being on news click and next week we'll come up with another battleground from another state thank you so much